Hi, I'm Ron with Dirt Bike Magazine, and we're here today with an interesting bike. It's the SWM RE500. Now, you might remember the last time we tested an SWM500. That was the RS500, an actual designated dual sport model. This is essentially the same bike. This bike has basically the same motor, the same frame, the same everything, but they're awaiting their current dual sport certification from the U.S. government. That might take a while. This bike will then morph into the RS500. What are the differences? Well, there's a little bit of mapping difference. Truth is that this bike is still legitimate to be taken on the street in most states, just not California and a few of the more hyperactive uh, legislative states. If you remember, this bike has a really interesting backstory that involves companies like BMW, the original Husqvarna, KTM even has a little involvement. This goes back to 2007 when Husqvarna was the first company to actually offer a legitimate, dirt-worthy dual sport bike. That bike was fully street legal, but it was a legitimate dirt bike. It had dirt bike suspension, it had power, it was great to go. And that bike actually inspired KTM to do the same thing later. Well, then there were a lot of corporate changes. BMW purchased Husqvarna and they phased out that motorcycle because they had their own 450. This motorcycle went on the back shelf. All the tooling still existed in the Verace factory, but it wasn't being used. Time passed, BMW lost interest in Husqvarna, and then it was purchased by KTM. And you know what happened there? KTM used all of its own tooling, all of its own motorcycles for the Husqvarna line. The factory there on the shore of Lake Verace was then unused for a few years. An investment group came in, bought that factory and all the tooling to produce those original Husqvarna motorcycles. They called the new company, SWM after a legacy brand in Italy. That's what this is. If you fast forward to here and now, this bike is old technology. It is basically a 2007 Husqvarna. A little bit dated perhaps because it's still 2007 technology with updates here and there like fuel injection, more modern suspension. But the good thing is the company understands that its role is to offer performance at a lower price. Therefore, this bike sells $8,299, thousands less than the Husqvarna or KTM. If you look at the actual construction of the bike, we have Brembo brakes, we have KYB suspension, we have top quality components everywhere. On the flip side, it is a little bit heavy. We had this bike on our scale. It weighs 274 pounds without any fuel in the tank. That tank is a little bit small. We measured that too. It's 1.7 gallons. Regardless, we still know this bike fairly well. We've been familiar with it for years. This isn't that far off the bike that Gary Sutherland and Ty Davis raced back in 08, that period. We have a lot of testing to do right now, so we're gonna take it out on the trails in Southern California and learn more about how the current SWM stacks up against today's motorcycles.
we've spent a day riding the RE500, and you know what? It's better than we imagined. First of all, we know that the mapping isn't entirely going to be the same when this bike gets its full dual sport certification, but we think they're on the right track. The bike is clean off the bottom, there's occasional backfires, but nothing you can't manage, and it's really difficult to stall. Power is excellent. It's smooth and linear, and it revs higher than we remember the bikes back in 2007 revving when they were called Husqvarna's. On the other side, the bike's heavy. I mean, you can feel that from the word go. If you get into a G out or any situation where you have to stop fast, the mass just kind of takes over. Making that a little bit worse, the Michelin tires are Euro spec short knobs. So you don't really get good hookup on most of the hard packed terrain that we have here in Southern California. On the other hand, suspension, it's pretty good. KYB front and rear, it seems like maybe the way the bike actually helps it, you get kind of the Cadillac phenomena where the wheels are taking a lot of the action and not transmitting it to the rider. We're really interested in this bike. We're gonna keep on doing a little bit more stuff with it. Eventually, we think we're gonna wind up with a shootout with all the other off-road bikes. And then hopefully later in the year, when it gets its dual sport certification, we'll have it in a dual sport shootout. You have to check back with us. We've got a lot of stuff planned, and this is just the beginning of a lot of dual sport stuff you'll see coming. So check back with us at dirtbikemagazine.com. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And always look on the newsstand for that print copy of Dirt Bike. We're not hard to find.